G'day and welcome back to Marriage and Mental Illness. We are doing this conversation a little bit differently if you're watching via video. Yeah. Uh, we're just um, trying out different things and see what works. So a lot of the conversation for me is very hard to have on an eye contact level. Mm. Um, not only because of my experience with radio and you can't see anyone that you're talking to, but sometimes the stuff that we talk about is quite hard. Yeah. And I don't really keep eye contact. So um, so today we're going to talk about what the good days look like. Because yeah, yeah, we've we've talked about the bad days. Um, we've talked it at length about that. So today we want to talk about some of the well, I want to talk about some of the successes <laughs> and what success looks like. Yeah. So uh, backstory, I've had a mental illness for 15 years. We've been married for 26. Um, there have been a lot of really bad days. Oh, there's been plenty of them. Um, happy to say though, that we have a lot more good days now than we do bad ones. That's good. And I think that's positive for both of us. Yeah. 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 Okay. So for me in my mentally ill state, a good day, rationally, if I try and rationalize it out, is a day that I don't feel bad in my um, head. That's I'm I'm not asking mm. a question. I'm making a statement. That's that's pretty much what it feels like. Okay. What what I'm hoping for to be a good day, but I know that you would challenge that. You wouldn't agree with that. It's more, it's more along the lines of that you've always said you don't, you don't really have days where you feel super happy. Mm -hmm. um, you're just glad if you're not super sad. Yep. So that's something that I'm aware of and I take into each day yep. for me. And yeah. that's the approach. And then I just check in with you. How are you doing? How yeah. are you feeling? Yep. That kind of thing. But on the upside, on a good day – you're more engaging, obviously, than other days. As in how? What What does that look like to somebody who doesn't know me? Um, I can just have normal conversations with you. I can mm -hmm. just chat. Bit of the, I don't know if it's an Australian term, but shoot the breeze. I can shoot the breeze with you. Um, is that an Australian term? Or is no, that, I'm that's pretty more, sure that's, that's an American that's, one. It's an American one. Good, good. Um, I can ask you questions. I can engage you more on sort of family life issues. Yep. Uh, keep in mind that that's now more on a regular daily basis yeah. than it has been in, in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Because that withdrawal for me was a big part of it, wasn't it? The, the big part of the difficulty that you faced was mm. me just not being engaged at all. It was having you physically there. But not, but nothing else. So you weren't engaged at all. Yeah, it was only your physical presence was was there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here in body, but not in spirit. Exactly. Oh, it was so funny because I couldn't remember the words I wanted to say. Well, what does it what does it then mean? So you're here physically. <laughs> that's it. That's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> I, I showed up. What more do you want? <laughs> Another great T-shirt. <laughs> I still think it's a win. You still actually got dressed every day and I know that that's a bar that I set for myself. <laughs> I got dressed. It's a win. <laughs> it, it's interesting. It's, it's come out a lot in my talks recently when I speak at schools and that is that a lot of people talk about depression as being like a warm blanket. It, yes. it's, it, they can get comfortable in it. I can't. I, I hate depression. Because depression to me is is almost violent. But what would you say, so when we talk about a warm blanket, um, which can be inviting or familiar as well, I'm just wondering if it's more, um, you'll probably always hate it, but you know it. It's it's better the devil you know. And That's it's right. And yeah. it's, and I see it as, like, let's look at it literally. Somebody's lying in bed. They're under a warm blanket. It's something that they know. It's something that they're somewhat comfortable with. 
And rather than face the potential cold outside of the the bed, they'd rather just stay in this dis- depressed state because it's easier. Mm. It's hard to say, okay, like this is me every morning. It's hard to get out of bed just because you don't want to get out of bed. You're comfortable. <laughs> but um, when you've got a mental illness, the, 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 the doing the things like, did I, I got out of bed? Yes. I got dressed. Yes. Did I brush my teeth? I don't know. Did I take my pills? Uh, maybe. Uh, <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> That's a no. <laughs> I have today though. So, but it's, yeah, I've never really understood that, that idea of it being a comforting, a comfort thing, a better the devil, you know, because it's like, would, would I rather be tortured or not tortured? I'd rather not be tortured, which is what depression feels like to me. Cause it's, when I say it's, it's, it's violent, it is, it's, it's angry and it's persistent and it's. Uh, constantly telling me how horrible I am and how bad I am at everything. Um, But I would have thought because it attacks you so much, you'd go, yeah, I know this. Same words, different day. No, no, um, no. It's sort of, there's this old myth that a person can get used to torture of any kind. And you really can't. Um, you can learn to tolerate it better, but it's never like, yay, I'm being tortured again. And that's what my depression is like. Because I, f- I feel really claustrophobic and, 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 and restricted. Okay. So what does that look like on a good day then? On a good day, I don't feel like that. Um, the depression might be there, but it's, uh, it's a quiet, tiny voice in the back of my mm. mind. And when it does speak, the good far outweighs the bad. Mm. The, the best example of this is, um, the story of the day that I tried to kill myself. The, the one bright shining light out of that night besides the cop who was kind to me was when I was in the ambulance and I realized that I didn't want to die. I just wanted to go home. And that was to you. Uh, When I say I wanted to go home to Mary, people have not quite understood that. I just wanted to be with you because you are home and I didn't want to be not with you. Mm. Um, so when the voices come up telling me that I need to kill myself, the positive is so much louder than the negative that I can challenge it quite easily. So in a practical example, we went to a function the other day. Went to a barbecue. Yes. And it was really nice. And I don't want to embarrass anybody by saying whose it was or where it was, but it was an interesting night for me because. You'd prep me yes. for a couple of weeks beforehand. Don't forget we're going to this party. This party's coming up. Uh, two days to go, one day to go. We went to it and I was really uncomfortable, but I wasn't challenged by my negative thoughts as much. Mm. And when we came out of it, I wasn't exhausted as I expected to be. Because mm. normally it's a mental struggle. What was great for me was you being able to go um, and be more what I'd call you Uh in that you just go off and approach a person and engage in conversation. Uh. Um, And it's kind of hilarious because I'm in that group situation. It's a barbecue. I You and I didn't know many people there. No. (laughs) (laughs) So me being an introvert, that was that was the worst because yeah. I just walked out and there was people all around us and I was just looking at them all going, no, no, <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Maybe I'll go back to the car, but I'm hungry. So, <laughs> yeah. but you were great. You went and engaged with people. You started up conversation and that then made it easier for me. So the interesting part of that is I don't have a mental 
illness. Mm -hmm. I am an introvert though, and I do struggle in group situations much better on -on one-on-one, whereas you do have a mental health issue and you just went in. Flying colours, you did really, really well. I still struggled because my natural inclination was to go to each group and engage each group, introduce Mm. myself, find out who they were. That's my natural state. Oh, okay. That sounds awful. I could not do that. But but you knew that when you married me. I've I've always been an extrovert. I've always been. Yes, I just follow you. (laughs) (laughs) Go to this group now, okay. (laughs) But people. People, um, it's not that people expect that of me. It's just, it's my natural inclination. It's, Mm. we're all here together for the same thing. So who is everybody? Mm. Um, Do we have things in common? Do we Mm. not have things in common? And it's difficult for me when I'm afraid to do that. And I was, and I, and I didn't fall into the old pattern of, kicking myself and then kicking myself again and kicking myself again. It was, okay, some of the things that I said were just, they fell on deaf ears and didn't land at all. But other questions I asked sparked people on. Mm. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and I was focusing on that. Mm. I wasn't focusing on the fact that, oh, I just said something and there was resounding silence and, that's because everybody hates me and I'm a terrible person, so I need to go home. Um, mm. So while that was not a comfortable experience, I have to chalk it up to the positives. I think it was a successful experience uh, from my point of view, um, knowing how some of our interactions have been in group situations in the past, I thought it was fantastically mm. um, successful. Because you got there, you saw someone you knew, you went and engaged them and came back. Then, thank goodness, it was food time. So we then ate and we, you engaged someone across the table. So worked again. I thought that, that was really good. Mm. And for me, that's a measure of you having a good day mm. because you can do those things. Yeah. So maybe all the prep work was worth it. Oh, absolutely. It was worth it. <laughs> well, but I mean, you know my mental health better than I do. That's why I'll often check in with you about how am I doing, what's going on here. Mm. Um, it, it is funny though. It's recently it's, you've said, oh, somebody's having a bad day in the family. And my first thought is, okay, what did I do to them? <laughs> why did I make him sad today? And And you've been able to go, it's got nothing to do with you. It's like, oh. <gasps> Yeah. Hello, really? <laughs> hello, Mark. It's not all about you. <laughs> <laughs> not that I want it to be, but generally in the last 15 years, when something negative in the house has happened, it's generally been centered around how I've treated somebody or. Yeah, sure. But we're in different circumstances with um, three teenagers. So yeah. how do you see me on the days where I go out to schools? Cause that's, that's very challenging for me to do that. Like when I was working in radio, I don't mind when I've got a title, when I've got a purpose for being there. Mm. This is Mark from the radio or mm. this is Mark from me act or whatever. I do better when I know who I'm supposed to be. But when I show up to a school, you're never quite sure. I'm never quite sure. So my question is, how do you see me on the days where I go into a school? Are they better days for me mostly? I think mostly they're better days. Mm -hmm. Um, They're planned. You know you're going and you're knowing in advance you're going. Mm -hmm. I don't always know in advance you're going, but sometimes you tell me as you're walking out the door you're going to a thing. Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, I've got a new one. I'm speaking to bus drivers next week. Oh, okay. This is all news. This is all new content oh, I, I'm hearing I now, only but. found out about the bus drivers today. I'm really excited <laughs> to speak to bus drivers. But that is that is something, and I don't know if it's necessarily your mental health, but um, I don't always know things. It's like it's a secret, but it's not. It's it's never a secret. It's It's like I asked one of our kids the other day to call you in the car 
And she said, dad, you know that you've asked me three times. I couldn't tell if I had asked or not. So each time I asked, it was. Asking for the first time. Yeah. Yeah. So would you mind giving him a call? Yeah. Yeah. What? I just did. You want me <laughs> another call? Oh, no. Okay, good. So we've done that. Great. And then a couple of minutes later, did I talk about that or did I not talk about it? Because mm. so I get an appointment to go speak at a school or a workplace. Um, generally I put it into the calendar. So I'll record it, take it out of the email, put it into the calendar. And that to me is a whole lot of communication about that. And I, I, I often forget that that's, I've only communicated with myself. It feels like <laughs> I've put it into the world, you know but of course I haven't. Though, yeah. Is just tell you. Shared calendar. Don't I have a shared calendar? I've got shared everything else. Um, probably, I don't think so. If we do, I'm not aware of the sharing. Sure, because. They share more. <laughs> share but you more. have access to everything I've got. No, not everything. But anyway, the, I think the <laughs> upside to that, you're asking me about how you are on those days. Yes. And I think it works for you because you know what's coming up. You know the routine. You know what you need to do. You've done it. A number of times now so mm. there's not really any surprises you know that you're probably going to do a story you don't know which version but you've got a couple to draw from mm -hmm. um when you come home i wouldn't necessarily say you're the most engaged but that's more because you're tired mm. from having to people it up for so long mm. and then come home but generally you're not unhappy you're just you're just quiet so let's talk about peopling it up for somebody that doesn't understand. What 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 does that mean? Just having to talk to a lot of people uh -huh. in a day or in a moment. Um, so for you going to a school that's filled with kids uh, or a room full of people, that's peopling it up. That's a lot of people in one go. Yeah. Um, I have to people it up all day in different meanings. <laughs> So as an introvert, I get tired from having to talk to so many people, but it's yeah. different for you. It's a different, it's a different thing going on in your head. Yeah. Well, it's a bit of mental gymnastics. You're there, you're telling a story, you're trying to cater it to your audience. Mm. Um, you're trying to make it as relevant as you can. Yep. Um, and that sort of thing. So, all right. So what does a good day look like? Let's talk about with the kids. I generally don't have bad days with them unless I try to get them to do jobs. Oh yeah. Because it's like the first time you've ever asked them to empty the dishwasher every single time. <laughs> they've only, they've only got a roster on the fridge to do it. It's <laughs> I have to, I have to get dressed every day. Oh my gosh. What are you talking about? This is this is like a whole new thing. No, um, you're usually pretty good with them, but I think if you're having a good day, you joke around with them more, sure, and engage with them in a fun way more. Yeah, um, I think sometimes that can be tricky for them because they they don't quite know which dad they're getting. Yeah, like how? No, I worry about that too. Yeah, um, so I I think they've become pretty resilient. And versatile, depending on yeah where you're at. It 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 worries me that I'm either good, happy, joke dad, or I'm cranky dad. And I know that I'm not. I and there's task dad. And there's ta there, there's do your jobs dad. Yeah, <laughs> that's a different person. Do, do your damn jobs. <laughs> yeah, that's a different person again. Yeah. Well, well, that's business. That's like, hey, we've got to get this stuff done. Let's just do it task mode no one likes you in task mode <laughs> no one <laughs> i still like calling it do your jobs mode oh. <laughs> you know what's interesting is when my mum was here and i was talking about doing the shopping and i realized how in sync i was with how she demanded that i do the shopping mm. there's a very simple formula <laughs> And it's yeah. like that with any tasks. It, it's 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 really interesting how formal for, form form how much that formed the way that I expect jobs to be done 
around their house now. And I think it's very interesting then that no one wants to go shopping with you. Then. Well, they do if <laughs> if they know that there's rules that I can't get cranky. Or if there's like a carrot at the end of it, so a treat. If there's a treat at the end of it, then it's worth it's worth task, but, Dad. But you pointed out to me <laughs> when one of them said, I don't want to go with Dad because he's always mad. It was like, okay, well, that's, that, clearly that's an issue. Mm. Uh, I shouldn't have a circumstance where there's something that I'm doing with the kids very, very often and they hate it because I'm going to get cranky. So – how much of that is their perception? And this is the the equation I went through. How much of that is their uh, uh, perception and how much of it is reality? And then we realized that the kids started seeing me in pain or withdrawn as being angry, not that dad's in pain or he's having a bad mental health day. So it was allowing the kids to have a way to intervene safely. Mm. But I mean, a, a child is going to think of it in simple terms. So it's going to be black or it's going to be white. They don't think like an adult. So therefore we can't expect them to rise to the occasion as an adult would. Exactly. And that's why we taught them. My son, he puts his hand on my shoulder and just says, dad, are you okay? Um, or dad, are you mad at me? Um, and I'll just, no, nah, mate, I'm either thinking or, you know, my, my back's hurting or something's generally going on, which because I shop by myself probably half the time, I don't notice because mm. I'm just doing it. I so. do advocate for shopping. <laughs> I think it works the best. <laughs> I think it's the most positive outcome for all. Uh, I, I like going shopping with groups of the kids. When I've got three or four of the kids, I enjoy it because I just stand at the trolley and say this, 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 and they just bring it. But so. Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> but, but I mean, that's the, that's, that's the thing when we're talking about good days and bad days, it's, I, uh, you would imagine, and I see this on Instagram a lot where people are talking about these phenomenal days where you're doing the Toyota jump at every moment because everything's so great. It's like, well, I never have that. Yeah. I can celebrate the times where I'm not bad, if that mm. makes sense. Yeah. And, and I think that's worthwhile doing because mm. um, if you're going to have days that you're not under the cloud where it's not suppressing you, then – Enjoy it as much as you can. Enjoy the the good moment when you have the moment to do it. Yeah. And I think nowadays in in our circumstances, they're definitely more good. A hundred percent. Do you still get tired just like a normal person? Of course you do. And there's different things that will make you tired. Mm. But I already know what they are mm. and accommodate as I can. Well, we've got a fairly good handle on what my triggers are. Um, what are the things that I can do and I can't do? Um, we do. So, And that's helped a lot. And that's come through just communication, 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 and hard lessons learned at times. All right. So what else do you consider to be a good day? Are there anything outside the things that we've talked about? You more want to do things when mm -hmm. you're having a good day. Um, before your mental health issues, you always wanted to go out. You were that sort of person. I want to go out. I want to go to the shops. I want to do this. I want to do that. Mm. Um, so when you're having a good day, you're then hitting people up saying, do you want to go out and look at this? Do you want to do this thing? Um, whereas before you might go and do a couple of things. Now you'd probably go out and do the one task and then come back home. Mm. But you're happy to do that. That's what a good day looks like. Well, okay. See, what's interesting about that is I thought I never wanted to do anything. And it's interesting that you're saying that it's turned around. I thought how I am now is how I've always been in certain areas. I, f I forget that. Mm. No, you loved going out. Just yeah. to do stuff. Just to do stuff. Usually out to the shops. 
but you'd travel then, travel to different shops <laughs> and look at different <laughs> things. Oh, I want to go look at this. Um, so on a good day, you'll probably revert back to that, doing want, wanting to do that. Yeah. Okay. No, that's interesting. I'm going to have to think about that because that's, yeah. No, well, it's a lot of this also comes back to um, a couple of lessons that I've learned in the last few months. One is about being patient. Mm. The idea that this too shall pass, that a bad day is not forever. Um, that it doesn't define all days. It, yeah, it's not the be all and end all. If I'm having a bad day, I can just be patient. Maybe it takes a day. Maybe it takes a week. Maybe it takes a month. But I'm going to get through it if I'm mm. doing all the things that I need to do, taking my pills, sleeping, um, eating right, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, but we have to also keep in mind that it didn't start off as days either. It didn't start off as a good day. It started off as a good moment. Mm. So you might have the morning or you might even have just an hour or, as I said, a moment where it was it was good and you felt good in, in that moment and you were happy with that moment. Yeah. And then it was done. And it was about enjoying it while you have it mm -hmm. and then fake it till you make it for the rest of it. <laughs> yeah. The other thing in this as well is the is not just the patience, it's the being kind to yourself. This is really messed with my mind. I know that it's come up at different times in your mental health journey, and that, that's the interesting thing. Something will come up and it will be altering you, mind altering for some reason. And you, you the, as the months and weeks go on, you can forget about it. And then somebody will mention something and you'll go, oh, yeah, that. But this being kind to myself thing, like the function that we're at the other mm. day, very, very easy for me to see that as a failure in many, many different ways. Um, I guess I was the guy that was always the first to the party and the last to leave. Um, if there was something going on, I wanted to be part of it. So for me now to be able to only say, well, I can only be here for an hour, an hour and a half is a massive difference in how I think about myself. See, the win for me in that scenario was that you came and yeah. agreed to. Which is where the kindness to yourself comes from. Mm. You've always said this. You've always done this. And I've allowed you to be kind to me while still holding on to that resentment of myself. So you've said, hey, I'm proud of you for just doing this. This is great. And I'm like, okay, thank you. I, you are a kind person and I appreciate the thought. Um, and inside I've gone, but she's 100% wrong. You're still an ass. Uh, you're still pathetic. Um, she doesn't know you well enough. Now, like the other night, it was like, hey, dude, you stayed for an hour. That's mm. really good. You spoke to like three people. Four people, five people. That's that's awesome. It's more people than I spoke to. <laughs> but, but for me, and 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 I can't stress this enough that the kindness that I'm showing myself has taken such a weight off my shoulders. Mm. And using the kindness to be the allowing kindness to be the loudest voice in my head. Mm. To where I say, well, you didn't speak to this guy, this guy, and this guy. It's like, but yeah, you spoke to this person, this person, and this person. That's really great. I and think, then you left and you were feeling fine. Exactly. I thought the, the fact that you went there and you were present and able to talk to people because I was not comfortable to talk to anyone <laughs> was, was fantastic. <laughs> it was. It was great. Um, and we took our one of our daughters with us <laughs> and she's even more introverted than I am. Because I was really stunned. At, because she's a teenager as well. But yeah. I was really stunned at how introverted she was. Oh yeah. Very, very. So that means when we're talking about that, that means that all the social norms go out the window. They don't exist. 
they're just she's completely shut down. Yeah, um, people say hello to her and she grunts at them and no eye contact. Huh. Yeah, I I did I did feel her pain. I felt her pain. Yeah, but I I'm an adult. I know I need to say real words to people and um, otherwise it's rude. <laughs> I've learnt those over time, what yeah. I need to do to get by. She just has to still learn those hard lessons. Yeah, yeah. But you could still understand it, even though um, you're a naturally outgoing person, you could still understand her feelings. Oh, now I can. Yeah. Because <laughs> what she was doing was what I felt like doing. Mm. Like. Oh, if only we were. 14. You know, cranky teenagers who <laughs> don't care about anyone. That would be fantastic. <laughs> All righty. So. So I think I guess, a good day, a good day mm. um, for me uh, are the best. I love good days because I can talk to you and engage with you. Mm. Um, and so can the family. Yeah. So I think today's a good day. Yeah? Yeah. Am I wrong? I think today's a good day. No, today's today's not bad. Yeah. Today's not bad. I don't go for fantastic and great. I go for okay. Yeah. And if it's okay for you, it's okay for me. Yeah. Um, I did have one last question before we think about signing off today. I wanted to know because in the past, if you might have been having a good day or a good moment and then life happened in that day, and brought you right back down to reality, would that then often make it a bad day, mental health wise? Well, in the past, absolutely, yes. Um, there's actually on Instagram, I did an Instagram where um, one day I just happened to take my glasses off and one of the arms stayed there. <laughs> so it just somehow it snapped while I was wearing it. And I pulled it off and I clearly remember my mind going to this absolute doom scenario. The world is about to end because your glasses now only have one arm and you can't fix them. But just as clearly, I remember whatever part of my mind it was saying, it's not that big a deal. And strangely, that voice was bigger in the moment. It was louder in the moment. And I was able to see the funny side of it. Um, it, it, is, it. It depends when you talk about life, when life happens, depends on how bad life is. Because mm. you and I have dealt with some pretty damn huge calamities. Um, we've woken up to some absolute nightmares. For me, the bad time, if I'm having a good day and then something happens, I see the dips are less and less. Mm. I might dip as far down, but I don't dip as long Yeah, because I'm able to challenge those things. I mean, would you agree with that? I mean, I'm interested to know from your perspective whether you've seen I, it. I think so. Sometimes I don't know if, because um, you're having a good day and I, honestly, I always feel like the bad news person. I'm always having to bring that dose of reality back to the family. It's, um, I don't like being that person, the, the bad cop kind of thing. But sometimes I just, I just think that um, if you're having a good day and this is I'm like stealing your your joy by telling you something that's perhaps not great news but you have to know well and the the interesting thing about that is you know that there's times where you've said stuff to me and you've been waiting for the world to collapse like Mount Vesuvius is about to happen and he's about to be covered in ash and and stuff and and you are you okay are you okay and it's hasn't affected me at all mm. um but because i'm thoughtful and thinking about it and i've got resting cranky face it's hard to tell mm. that oh this hasn't had the effect that i was thinking it was going to have 
but no, I've I've definitely noticed that the dips they get shorter, and I'm getting back to a point where I can just put things in perspective straight away mm. and just go, this is not that big a deal. Yeah. Um, like for instance, when the kids drop a plate or something. Mm. At one time, that was just. I may as well have put a gong on my head and bashed it 50 times. Now it's like, well, they're more important than that plate, aren't they? They're more important than that cup. So mm. why get upset about it? Yeah. Um, sometimes there is a, a bit of frustration. They do something that, and something negative happens that didn't have to. And you're sort of like, why did you make those choices? Um, but it doesn't affect my mood like it would have at one stage. All right. So how have the good days, to your perspective, how have the good days gotten to a point where there's more good days than bad days? What have I had to do? Just broad spectrum. Like for somebody who doesn't know, just what are the things that I've done that you see that have been good for maintaining a more positive mental health? Um, first one, straight off the bat, is you being more engaged and wanting to be part of the conversation, even if you really don't want to be part of the conversation, <laughs> but you'll stay how, in there. But how have I done it, though? Like, what have you seen me do that has brought about this change? It hasn't been overnight, has it? It hasn't been, I just no, woke no, up one day and said, I'm going to have good days. Like you said before, it's it's always a gradual thing where it started off being super terrible, mm. and it was, and you just had to keep working on it until such time as um, you it, it didn't throw your mood that much. And you could bounce back out of it. Yeah. Um, what you have actually done to try and keep that, I'm not sure what you do in your head. Yeah. But, I mean, it's. I, I guess the point I was making is that I've tried to do the work. I've tried Absolutely. to be present. I've tried yeah. to be mindful. I've Absolutely. tried to be aware of how my mood is affecting other people. That's right. And I think even recently we've had to battle some really difficult things together mm -hmm. just as a couple. Yeah. And um and a lot of them have been hard on both of us and I had to talk to you about that and mm -hmm. just saying uh that I was feeling disconnected from you. Yeah. Um because you'd retreated a bit to protect yourself and to try and deal with everything plus your yeah. mental health and I knew that but it also makes it difficult to be yeah in a marriage and as a couple yeah when you feel like you're by yourself yes that's yeah. right and it was and I think I told you it was very far too familiar a feeling uh, uh. but then I think even though you probably didn't want to you worked on it mm. and tried to be a little more engaging yeah well the kindness that I have in that um, scenario is that, okay, I may have dropped the ball, but it's not the end of the world. So mm. you, and being, and acknowledging that I have the ability to have some impact on that. That's right. But also mentioning it to you in a way of, of saying, well, I actually like, I like you and I like your company yeah. and feeling disconnected from you is too difficult. Yeah. So I can't do life without you participating in it with me. Yeah. And, and you took that really well, actually, I thought. Well, <laughs> when your biggest problem is that your wife wants to spend more time with you, that's um in the grand scheme of things, that's not a it's not a real terrible kind of problem to have. <laughs> All right. So the good days will come. I mean, that's the message out of today. The, the good days are there to be had if you're willing to do the work. Mm. Um, there is a cost and it's not easy, um, but it's worth it. Yeah, that's true. And the, the people who are, are truly worth the value in your life will stick by you. Um, 
even though you truly are not your best on, on most days. Yeah. And it's a battle. Um, absolutely. But you've got to do the, the small steps to get to the big ones. Yeah. And it, just to accept the small wins. And celebrate the small wins. Exactly. As much as you can. Yeah. <laughs> well, hey, we want to thank everybody for listening to this episode of Marriage and Mental Illness. You can check us out on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Anchor, uh, Spotify, all of the places that you can find uh, podcasts. You can also find us on the Wisdom app. We thank everybody that's listened to us through Wisdom today. Um, and we will talk to you next week. But Thank you for listening to Shattered, the podcast. I'd like to thank our producer, Meredith Brosnan, our executive producer, Torian Lau, and the band Adelaide for allowing us to use their song as our theme. Go to shatteredthepodcast.com for more information. Thanks, everyone.